So you wanted to jazz up your network by adding these things called VLANs. Well, you went out, jazzed up your router, and now you're running PFSense. But how do you get VLANs set up? Well, that is what we are going to look at today. All right, so here we are in the test environment. I've virtualized everything. It'll just make this a lot easier to explain. So here we are in the virtualized PFSense. I have two networks. WAN and LAN, that is pretty much going to be the default if you are just setting up PFSense for the first time. Hopping over into one of my virtual machines, this is on the main LAN network. This will be what you will probably see. Pretty generic setup of PFSense. But the first thing we are going to do is go into interfaces, go to assignments. Just like I mentioned before, we only have a WAN and a LAN that is normal. But we want to create a VLAN. So guess what? We are going over to the VLANs tab. Then we are going to click add. Crazy stuff, right? So under parent interface, this is going to be where you specify the physical port that you want your VLAN to work on. So you may have multiple ports that you want to use. We just have one. It's our LAN and that's what we will use. Here is where you give it a VLAN tag. It's going to be between one and 4094. I will use 50 for this example. Priority, don't worry about this. And description, we will call this one test VLAN. Clearly you can see I've tested this out before. Click save. Then we are going to go back into interface assignments. And now you can see we have an option here, available network ports. VLAN 50 on EM1 LAN test VLAN. Go ahead and click add. And it just created that interface for us, opt one. You can go in and change that to something more user friendly. I will change this to test VLAN. And you're also going to want to hit enable. Then under IPv4 configuration type, we are going to use static. What that lets us do is go down here and specify the IPv4 address. And we are going to use 192.168.50.1. Make sure you are using a private IP range. Don't just specify random IP address numbers right here. I will explain why that is important later. And if you're wondering what those are, uh, it specifies it right here, private networks. So that's gonna be on 10.0.0.0.8, uh, 172.16, uh, 192.168.50.1, on the 16 subnet. So make sure your address is within there. Also, don't forget to specify your subnet over here. 32, that would give us one IP address. We don't want that. So commonly, you'll want to use uh, 24 for maybe larger home networks. You can use 23, but we'll stick with 24. And that is all we need to change here. Go ahead and click Save, Apply. All right, applied successfully. So one thing I want to show you is in LAN, similar concept, static IPv4. This one is on the 192.168.1.1. And remember, our VLAN is on .50.1. Okay, so we have a VLAN set up. Neat. If you click on interfaces, you'll see that this is now listed. Cool. But it's still not working how we want it to. One thing that is very important is to make sure that DHCP is turned on. So go into services, DHCP server, and hopefully you see your test VLAN here. Go ahead and click that. And by default, it is not on. You will want to enable this. Another thing you might want to do is scroll down and specify a range. So by default, uh, yeah, it gives you this entire range. You'll want to change this to, you know, you could use the entire range, but I like to specify a slightly smaller range to give myself, you know, some static IPs that I may want to assign later. So I usually do uh, .10 to maybe, depending on the subnet size, we'll do 250 here. So that gives us, what, nine addresses at the bottom side and four at the top in case we need to use those for static assignments. But yeah, this will be perfectly fine. Scroll down and click Save. Okay, we have a VLAN set up that is handing out IP addresses on that 192.168.50.10 to 250 network. And to test this, I created another VM that is using that tag 50. This is just specified in PFSense. Uh, if you have a smart switch or whatever machine you're hooking up to, uh, you, don't, you don't need to specify this tag. Let's go in here and see what our assigned IP address is. Here you can see we have been given an IP address on that 50 network. We have been given 10, so it works. 
We are connected to our VLAN and we've been assigned an appropriate IP address based on the DHCP range that we gave it. Neat, so let's look at one that's on our regular VLAN. If I go in here and take a look, you can see this one is on the main LAN network. We have that dot one dot 100 subnet, so that's normal. But what if we try to ping our VLAN network? You can see we can reach it from our LAN to our VLAN, but how about from our VLAN back to our regular LAN? Let's go ahead and try that. Okay, we can't reach it, and that is the default behavior of PFSent. So let's explain what's going on here by jumping back into our PFSense GUI. So to explain what's going on here, we are going to dive into the firewall rules. So by default, your LAN is going to be set up like this. These are your rules. The one we wanna focus on is this one right here. This basically says anything on our LAN network going to anywhere we are going to allow. That is why we can reach our other VLAN. Also why we can reach the internet. However, if we go over into test VLAN, there is nothing here, so it is essentially blocking everything. Nothing on the test VLAN can actually go anywhere. So cool, maybe we go over to LAN, we take this rule, we copy it, and we just say this is going to be on the test VLAN interface, and the source is going to be test VLAN net, and save. Apply. Now if we go back and try to ping back into our LAN, you can see we can do that because we have the same rule that says anything on the test VLAN network, it can reach anywhere. But we don't want that, right? That basically defeats the purpose of having a VLAN. We want to separate this from the other networks. There are a few ways to do this. I will show you a simple way, then I will show you what I think is the cleaner way. So the first and simple way is to create just a rule that says, block test VLAN from reaching the LAN. And to understand how this works, just basically know that all the rules you have listed here operate from top to bottom, meaning the top one is going to be acted upon first, followed by everything moving all the way to the bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and add a rule to the top and say, so this is going to be a blocking rule. It is going to be on the interface test VLAN the protocol, we are going to say any. The source is going to be anything on the test VLAN network. And the destination is going to be our LAN network. When we save this, you can see that we now have a block rule that says anything on the test VLAN network, block it from reaching the destination LAN network. And you can see that is acted upon first. So if we try to access the LAN network, it is going to block it. And if we're not trying to reach the LAN network, it's going to go to the next rule and say, okay, you're good, allow. So going back into our VLAN machine, you can see now when we try to ping the LAN network, we can't, which is good. But we can also reach the internet, which is probably what you want. Boom, YouTube, everyone's favorite website. So just to show you how that works from top to bottom, what if we put this rule above this one? What do you think will happen? So we still have the same two rules in here. They are just ordered differently. Well, that actually makes a huge difference. So going back into our VLAN computer, you can see we can still reach the internet because we're allowing that, but we can also now ping back into our LAN network. So completely different functionalities with the same rules just matters which order they are in. So keep that in mind when setting up your rules. Let's put this back and double check. Cool. Okay, so what about the clean way that you said before? All right, let's take a look at that. So we're going to delete both of these rules. An approach we are about to take is assuming that every VLAN you have created, you don't want it to be able to communicate with any other VLAN. So we are going to isolate a specific VLAN from the rest of the network. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is go over here into firewall and create an alias. An alias is basically just giving a name to a specified group of networks or IP addresses. Here you can see I've already created it. I called it private IPs. Now, what exactly is this? Well, it's an alias that I've created that lists all of the private IP networks so that I can just use this private IPs alias when I wanna talk about any network that falls into the private IP range. And that is why I mentioned before when you were creating your IPv4 IP address for your VLAN to keep it within one of these private networks. 
So let's see how we use that when we create a firewall rule. So we're gonna go back into our rules, go into test VLAN, and we are going to add a rule. So this is gonna be a pass rule, interface test VLAN, protocol any, source, test VLAN network, and the destination is going to be a single host or alias. And I wish it had a drop down here, but if you just start typing, it'll list your aliases. So we are going to list our private IPs alias that we created, and we are going to invert match, which means anything from the source that is going to anything that's not private IPs, we are going to pass through. Let's save that and apply. So reading this from left to right, anything over IPv4 from the source test VLAN network or any port going to any destination that's not within this alias, which is all of our private networks over any port, we are going to allow it. So we are going to have to add one more rule and that is for DNS. So, so if we go back into our VLAN computer, you can see that if we try to ping back into LAN, it doesn't work which is good. What if we try to ping uh, google.com? We still can't ping the outside network and that is because we have no DNS. So how do we solve this? Well, it depends on your setup, but for the most people, you will probably have your PF Sense box, box. You'll probably have your PF Sense box acting as your DNS resolver. And if you go into services, DNS resolver, this is enabled then you're probably set up in this way. You can specify by going into interfaces and going to test VLANs. Oops, not there. Going into services DHCP server under test VLAN, you can see you can specify a custom DNS server, but we haven't done that. So we are using the default uh, DNS resolver on PFSense, meaning that our PFSense box is handling all DNS. So what do we need to do? Well, let's go back in the firewall Go to rules, test VLAN, and create one at the top just for DNS. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say pass, interface test VLAN, protocol is going to be TCP UDP. Uh, you could probably just leave it to UDP, but whatever. The source is going to be test VLAN net, and the destination is going to be test VLAN address. And what we wanna do is specify the range limited to DNS, which is port 53 and then hit save. Why? And now we can ping Google. Yay. So yeah, that is how you go about setting up VLANs in PFSense with proper firewall rules. Now, this is a generic example. Everybody's network is different. So this may work perfectly for you. You may wanna modify this a bit. Maybe you don't want your LAN to reach you know, your VLAN. Maybe you go in here and create a blocking rule at the top. So. Neither of these can talk to each other. It's completely up to you, but I hope that I've given you the tools and helped you understand how to go about setting this up. And maybe you can expand on that for your network. So yeah, uh, that's all I have. If you liked the video, then drop a like. If you like content like this, then please subscribe and I will see you guys next time.